Now coming to basal ganglia. What is basal ganglia? Basal ganglia and cerebellum, these are other two structures which are involved in controlling the motor movements. That's why we see them under the motor system. This basal ganglia, it is a group of five interactive structures. They are nothing but the deep nuclei. They are the deep nuclei which is present inside the cerebrum. Inside the cerebral cortex, there are some cortical mosses which are present in the deep nuclei and they are functioning together. That's why they are called as basal ganglia. They are nothing but the grey matter. What is grey matter? Grey matter are nothing but the nuclei. Whereas the white matter is formed by the axons. White matter, all the axons together, they will form the white matter. This five interactive structures, we will name them. So, various sections I have drawn here. But all of them are uh, indicating the basal ganglia only. These are closely associated with the thalamus. This basal ganglia is very closely associated with the thalamus structure. And here you can see here a very broad nucleus which is covering like a tail. It has a head portion and the tail portion. This entire nucleus is nothing but the caudate nucleus. This nucleus is called as the caudate nucleus. And it is one of the most dominant nuclei in the basal ganglia. Now next coming to this, there is next to the thalamus, here we have one more nucleus. This nucleus looks like a lentiform in shape, like lens-like structure. So this has two nucleus inside them. That is the putamen and the globus pallidus. Globus pallidus. So here is the other, again the section, here is the thalamus and this is the cordage nucleus head part and this is the tail part. And in between them, these blue color structures are nothing but our internal capsule. The internal capsule passes between these structures, internal capsule. Now, whenever we take another section, that is a vertical section, what we can see is we are able to see two more nuclei. The, they include the, so caudate is here, globus and putamen is here. There are two more nuclei, which is called as a subthalamic nucleus. The fourth one is the subthalamic nucleus. And the fifth one, is the one of the most important for the MCQ perspective and clinical aspect also that is called as the substantia nigra. Substantia nigra. So these are the five interactive structures and most of the, all of them are involved in the motor movements. So whenever there is a defect in them, obviously we will present with motor disorders. So coming to these five nuclei, the caudate nucleus, putamen, globus pallidus, subthalamic nucleus and substantia nigra. Here, the caudate nucleus and putamen, they are closely associated and they are together called as striatum. They are together, single name for them is striatum. And putamen and globus pallidus, they are looking like a lens. So what are they called as? They are called as lentiform nucleus. Lentiform nucleus. And finally, this caudate, putamen and globus pallidus, all three together, now they are called as neostriatum. Neo striatum. This is the new name for all these three interactive structures. And coming to globus pallidus, the globus pallidus is further divided into globus pallidus internal segment, globus pallidus external segment. So these are the other two divisions of it. And coming to subthalamic nucleus, one MCQ about this nucleus is it is the only excitatory output from the entire basal ganglia. The basal ganglia, all the interconnections, this is the this is the only one which is giving an excitatory output. Only excitatory fibers come from there. And what is the excitatory neurotransmitter? The excitatory neurotransmitter here is nothing but our glutamate. Here it is glutamate. And all of us know that substantia nigra is the one which is involved in Parkinson's disease. This substantia nigra, why it is called substantia nigra? Nigra is the term for used for black because it has densely accumulation of melanin pigment. And it is further subdivided into substantia nigra pass reticularis, substantia nigra pass compacta. This substantia nigra pass reticularis and substantia nigra pass compacta, they produce specific neurotransmitters. Out of these two, if you ask me which is majorly involved in case of Parkinson's disease, it is the substantia nigra pass compacta. But what is the neurotransmitter involved here? Here the neurotransmitter involved here is dopamine. Here it is dopamine. But if the question is asked, what is the neurotransmitter released from substantia nigra pars reticularis? Please make pay, pay attention here. If they ask the neurotransmitter of pars reticularis, it is not dopamine. It is not dopamine. It is nothing but the GABA. So I told you the only excitatory product here is glutamate, which is from the subthalamic nucleus. Rest everything else produces the inhibitory neurotransmitter that is nothing but the GABA. One more inhibitory neurotransmitter that is produced is the dopamine, dopamine from the substantia nigra pass compacta. 
So coming to the function, what is the most important function of the basal ganglia? They are involved in controlling the motor activity along with the help of thalamus. They also help in selecting the further movements. Even the cerebellum as well as the basal ganglia, both of them are helping in selecting the further movements. Then whenever any abstract thought is there, then this basal ganglia will be making it to an voluntary action. And recently, one specific function of caudate nucleus has been identified, which is involved in cognition. So, which is the neurotra which is the nuclei which is involved in the cognitive function in the basal ganglia? It is caudate. C for C, just remember caudate is for the cognition. Cognition function. This is a recent finding, so we can expect it in an MCQ. Then finally, it is also involved in learning and memory processes also. So now coming to the diseases of basal ganglia. Last need PG, they have asked one plain simple question. What is the neuron which is affected in Huntington's chorea? The answer is pretty simple. Caudate nucleus is involved in Huntington's chorea. Huntington's chorea. So this is a simple question that has been asked. And subthalamic nucleus has also been asked once, which is in subthalamic nucleus, what is the disease? If the subthalamic nucleus is affected, it is nothing but the hemibalismus. Hemibalismus. Hemibalismus is the dancing kind of movement which happens in one half of the body and this happens in the subthalamic nucleus. This is very very important. Then what happens whenever there is a problem in lentiform nucleus? Lentiform nucleus means it is the putamen and globus pallidus. So there is a disease called as Wilson's disease. This, this is a disease which can affect the lenticular nucleus. And finally the most important disorder which is substantia nigra disorder. What it causes if there is a defect in it it causes Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease. So all these four diseases are very very important. They have asked hemibalismus. So finally they can ask Huntington's chorea or Wilson's or Parkinson's. Anything they can ask. But substantia nigra past reticularis. Remember it is GABA. Then coming to the Parkinson's disease. It is the one of the most common neurodegenerative disease. So what is happening in Parkinson's disease? There is degeneration of the neuronal neurons. Which is passing from the substantia nigra pars compacta. And it was identified by James Parkinson. That's why the name is Parkinson's disease. He named it as paralysis agitans. So what was happening is the patients was having some resting tremor kind of movements. So they have named it initially as paralysis agitans. And this is the first disease which is identified as a specific neurotransmitter deficiency. So what is the neurotransmitter deficient here? It is nothing but the dopamine. Dopamine is deficient. So, there is degeneration of dopaminergic neurons. This dopaminergic ne neurons passes from the substantia nigra pars compacta. It passes from pars compacta to the striatum. Striatum includes both caudate and putamen. But if they are specifically asked which part, like which neurons is affected majorly, then the answer is putamen. The neurons which is going from pars compacta to the putamen, that is the answer. So, this is the major neurons affected. The neurotransmitter deficient here is the dopamine. And there are specific inclusion bodies which you will study in pathology also. That is Levy bodies are accumulated in Parkinson's disease. So what is the primary defect in Parkinson's disease? Inside the basal ganglia, there are two different pathways. One is called the direct pathway and another one is indirect pathway. Usually the direct pathway is activated. So whenever the direct pathway is activated, it enhances the movement. If the indirect pathway is added, inhibited, usually... But what happens in Parkinson's? The reverse happens. There is activation of indirect pathway and the inhibition of direct pathway. So what will happen? Now the coordination with the thalamus will be completely lost. So it will present with some movement disorders. So let's see what are all the movement disorders that can happen in this Parkinson's patient. And one fascinating thing about the basal ganglia is in the same disease also, there can be hyperkinetic movements and hypokinetic movements. It is thus the neuronal connection, the deficiency of dopamine is causing this mismatch of movements and the coordination with the thalamus is completely lost. So what is the classical triad seen in Parkinson's disease? If they give you this classical three terms in the question, then most likely it is a Parkinson's disease. They can ask you about the neurotransmitter also. So what is the classical triad? The first one is bradykinesia. What is bradykinesia? Bradykinesia means there is slowing of movements. Or sometimes it can go to akinesia also. Akinesia also. Then another thing what will happen is even at rest the patient will have tremor. This is called as resting tremor. Resting tremor. 
and this resting tremor usually the patient will be having as if he is rolling a pill that is also called as pill rolling movement pill rolling movement then what else can happen what else can happen is there can happen a rigidity the rigidity can happen rigidity can happen and this rigidity can be of lead pipe rigidity lead pipe rigidity means this rigidity will have uniform resistance or cogwheel type of rigidity cogwheels we see it in the watches also they move like there will be resistance then there will be fluent movement then resistance fluent movement alternating resistance will happen and then a normal movement will happen so it can be a lead pipe rigidity or a cogwheel type of rigidity so anything can happen in this parkinson's disease other than this the patient will have a typical gait this gait is a classical of parkinson's disease which is called as festinant gait in this the patient will be stooped and he will be walking with short shuffling gaits the patient will be walking with short shuffling gaits and he will be having resting tremor also and faces the patient will have some masked kinds of faces which is called as parkinson faces so all these are the features of parkinson's disease so what is the classical treatment for parkinson's disease dopamine is the deficiency so the primary treatment will be giving carbidopa along with levodopa these are other isoforms of dopamine levodopa so these are the two treatment that can be given to it. there are multiple treatments pharmacologically you will read more many drugs but these two are very very important so these are the features of parkinson's disease